My name is Carissa Wilsey. I'm at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center at the Center on Child Abuse and Neglect. In Oklahoma, we received a grant from the Children's Bureau and tried to ask the question of what would behavioral health screening do for our kids in care? Um, we felt like the research supported that it was going to improve child outcomes as well as system outcomes and using the identification of the needs of children for their behavioral health and identifying what services would be appropriate for them based on those needs. We also wanted to look not only at the child outcomes, but at system outcomes as well. Um, and this was done through a five-year grant through the Children's Bureau. And what we decided to do with our screener is develop our own um, package of screeners based on the survey of well-being for young children, um, for our youngest kids that were three and under. And then for our older kids, we used the Pediatric Symptom Checklist 17. Um, but we added three items that we piloted that is a trauma response scale um, to use for this. And we also looked a lot more at functioning um, and a lot more at services received. We developed graphs that allowed caseworkers and supervisors at child welfare to look at scores over time for the kids in child welfare as they were asked to um, give these screeners monthly during their contact visits. So then they could see not only the progress of a child, but they could also use these graphs to, um, to speak with court personnel as well as other um, mental health providers. We using qualitative interviews with caseworkers and supervisors, we identified a lot of positive aspects of the screener, including identifying child issues, that the screener was easy to use, um, that it helped them make appropriate referrals for the needs of children. Supervisors also reported it, it, it facilitated early intervention um, and it enhanced the conversations with providers, and including in court, um, the providers as well as with the foster parents. And then a standardized way to look at children in child welfare custody um, and having a baseline of each of the child's needs. When we looked at barriers to doing this in child welfare, one, of course, as we know, is issues with time. Um, they don't have a lot of time, so it's not only the in the homes being able to have time to talk through it there, but also the documentation time. But then we also saw caseworker attitude towards the screener and foster parent attitude towards the screener were major factors as barriers as well. So far, we have trained over 1,800 caseworkers and supervisors. Our screening number is um, based on over 18,000, or almost 18,000 kids. Um, the positive screens, what I like to point out to um, child welfare is that if we would have only screened the child once, we would have missed out on 36,000 conversations between a caseworker and a foster parent about a child's behavioral health needs. Uh, workers reported through the training that they learned how to administer it, score it, review the results of our screener, as well as utilize this for referrals and case planning. And when we asked them pre and post um, the things that they learned, it was as well as the impacts of trauma, but also in how to talk with providers and having a comfort level there. As we started in the beginning of um, rollout, we went statewide, so we started with a pilot. Gradually, the number of screeners per month has been raised, but in the middle of the graph here, it's still pretty low. That's when we went statewide. So it continued to have to have a lot of support throughout the state in order to get the number of screeners up. The biggest success we had was embedding it into our SACWIS system. Um, so we saw for kids that had only been screened once, um, they were drastically improved over the six months after embedding it into the SACWIS system of having re-screening occurrences. Looking at placement data and time in the system, we have seen some decreases in the mean time in the child welfare system, as well as a decrease in the number of placements um, in, uh, while they're in child welfare custody. And each additional screening has added some additional benefit for these factors as well, not just ever versus not being screened. If we look at um, the kids at the first time of screening, on the left side would be not needing um, a referral, and then as it goes across, it's the number of subscales needing a referral. So most of our kids at the beginning were receiving counseling-only services, um, but as you move up in severity, we're seeing that they then add medication services to that, and they have more likely of a chance to re be receiving counseling. We we're most interested in this red circle here of, okay, we've identified children that need services um, and they are not already in services and don't have those in place. Um, but we also found that with the medication usage that um, we had a pretty low numbers compared to national averages. 
the rate of behavioral health services over time as they're screened, going across the bottom shows the screener occasion. So the first time kids are screened, about 35% were in some behavioral health services, but as they move along, that raises up to between about 50% of kids. Um, so as they were screened over time, that increased the chance of them getting into behavioral health services. Among our positive screens, we asked the question, has a child received a trauma-informed mental health assessment? And we trained them on what that phrase meant. Um, a lot of our kids in the state of Oklahoma had received that, but there was a big number also that had not received a trauma-informed mental health assessment, and many also didn't know um, what they'd received. If we look at the change in scores over time of our screeners, um, we see that the, those who are in treatment have a more drastic reduction in the change over time compared to those who are not in treatment and that our measure was sensitive enough to, in order to capture this. We saw this for each of the subscales as well as a functional factor score we were able to compute. When services were already in place, we could ask some questions to get at, are these services um, working? And how are they involving the foster parent and getting at some of the, the pieces of evidence-based practice that we need? And so there are a large number that identified that services weren't helping very much. And then the other place that we wanted to put in some questions of opportunities to intervene more quickly um, would be if the child has problems with drugs and alcohol, sexual behavior, or suicidal ideation. And so all of these opportunities that we were giving to caseworkers to intervene at an earlier level um, added up to a, a lot of kids that needed help. So we feel like this has been a, a successful statewide implementation for us in Oklahoma, uh, but we continue to work through sustainability issues and how to continue this work as we are just nearing the end of our time on our grant. Thank you.